G'day everyone, today's video is a get ready with me, where I will show you all the layers and the pieces of my Tudor Yoda outfit. Now before I begin, let me quickly mention loud and clear, this is historically inspired, not historically accurate. After all, we are talking about a small old green alien dude from a big sci-fi movie franchise and placing that character in the realms of some sort of Tudor inspired female outfit. First up, the shoes. I'm using my trusty pair of Phantasma Victorian boots. They have served me well for a few costumes now and have certainly seen some better days, but they are comfy to wear and work well with the small heel. Next up is the crinlin. Yes, it is green. However, the reason for that was that I made it for my aerial cosplay and well, it works quite nicely for some other costumes as well. The elastic waistband makes it super simple to get on and off. And if you want to know the measurements and how I made it, I have a tutorial up on my channel all about that. Now it's onto the petticoat. This is also from my stash and sure, so far this costume is being made up of garments that I already had in my possession. But hey, if it works and I'm happy with how it all looks like in the end, I'm a happy camper. This petticoat was one I made specifically for this crinoline and it hides the rings very nicely. And as always, you've got to make sure you have full fluffness when wearing a petticoat. It was a pretty simple petticoat to construct and the closure is just a hook and bar in the back. I also have a tutorial on how I made this too. And now to get those hips, you have a hip and bum roll. Basically, it's a large stuffed crescent moon that gets tied around your middle. And voila, you have those childbearing hips that were so in fashion once upon a time. But wait, I'm committing a costuming sin. No stays, <gasps> no corset. I was contemplating to create some after I finished the costume, which granted is a little backwards. But that was because at the time I was working hard to get this costume done before I flew over to the US and attended WonderCon. <laughs> Well, that didn't happen. Thanks, COVID-19, you jerk. But in the end, I decided with the boning in the dress, the other undergarments and my naturally rectangular shape, I didn't really need it. Remember, this is historically inspired, not accurate. Okay, on to the good stuff, starting with the underskirt. The front of this is some gorgeous silk I've had in my collection for just far too long. And the back is cheap as chips, bem silk lining. A part of me felt like such a heathen for mixing the two fabrics together, but the back will never be seen, except now by you all. And a waste for silk is a terrible sin. Just like the petticoat, it is done up at the back with a hook and bar closure. And now the main attraction, the overdress. This green silk, I absolutely love it. As you can see, the inside of the bodice is lined in the same green bem silk as found in the underskirt and has boning stitched in place inside of the boning channels. The collar facing is the same gorgeous silk from the underdress, which I've also used in the sleeve cuff. I finished the overdress with some gold trim from my stash and it does up at the center front with just some hook and eye tape. With a quick adjustment of the collar, I'm already feeling like I should rule England or something. And here's a quick twirl. Moving on to decoration now, first up is the brooch. This was super fun to make. The gems in the middle are actually melted bottle caps and yep, I've got a tutorial for that too. Plug, plug, plug. You know, watching this back, I pull the weirdest faces when I'm concentrating. Next up is the belt. This is made from the same silk as the underskirt, but to make it pop, I added a different gold trim to it. Then I added some more bottle cap gems and went a bit crazy with adding beads. There are some glass beads, plastic beads, and even metal beads on there. Basically what I thought might work together from my bead pile. And more twirling, this time as a music box figurine apparently. Oh no, shock, horror, I have no hair. Better add a wig. I really like this wig, you know. To me, it gives off a certain swamp hag, semi Ophelia vibe. And now for the fun part the ears and the veil. Yoda to me is not complete without his iconic ears. And I thought it might be fun to attach the veil, which is normally in the back of a headpiece like a French hood to the ears themselves. It all came together pretty easily with the ears being attached to a headband. 
And with the veil, I decided to add some applique work with the logo of the Jedi Order and then litter it with rhinestones, like twinkling stars, because sci-fi reasons. And lastly, out of my matching little bag, inspired by watching Alicia Estelle's work, are my two obnoxiously large rings to finish off the look. And with that, Tudor Yoda is complete. All in all, this is a really fun costume. It's not meant to be taken seriously, and it was a joy to make this using only materials I had on hand. Now, some people think that it looks a little bit more like Princess Fiona. To you kind people, I say this, whatever floats your boat. After all, they're both green fantasy characters, so I'm not mad. As always, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed that. If you did, please consider clicking that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss a video. I might very well do another one of these, so stay tuned. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye!